Welcome to EverydayHDR.com. I am Blake Rudis, and today I want to talk about something that I started a, co a couple of posts ago about uh, creative camera raw, where I took Adobe Camera Raw and used it to make a creative effect, like a cross process. Well, today I want to show you how you can use Camera Raw to make a creative black and white photo. Now, I know you might be saying, well, you know, we can use the black and white adjustment layer, Blake. Why would I want to use Camera Raw? Well, there's a lot of powerful things here in Camera Raw, and I'm going to show you the difference between the adjustments in Camera Raw and the adjustments in the black and white filter in Adobe Photoshop CS6. So this is a uh, HDR image that I opened up here in Camera Raw, and I want to make it black and white. And to do that, you want to go up to this HSL slash grayscale, which is hue, saturation, and luminance, or grayscale. Um, here you've got the hue, saturation, and luminance of the colors that exist in the photograph that you're working on. Now, if you press convert to grayscale, it will kind of mix all those together and give you um, what I'd like to think of like the zone system that Ansel Adam used, where uh, you kind of have a, a value for each color in the photograph on the grayscale. So that value being something 0 to 10. And where does that color fit in that 0 to 10 grayscale? It's kind of confusing if you, if you don't know a lot about it, but when you see this tutorial, it's, it's very similar to that. We're basically going to be giving a grayscale value to the color that already existed in the photograph. So when you see all these adjustment sliders here, red, orange, yellow, green, aqua, blue, purple, magenta, it's like, it's kind of a sensory overload and you don't want to get into it, but it's really not as intimidating as it looks. So let's look at the original photograph. What I want to do is I want to take this, uh, oh, to do that I pressed P or clicked on the box up here for preview, sorry. Um, that'll toggle, if you press P, it'll toggle the preview on and off to show you what you are doing and what, what was previously there. Um, what I want to do with this photograph is push all of the background stuff back and pull the typewriter forward because I feel the typewriter is actually the most important part in this in this photograph, but the background is not really making it the star player here because the background is kind of overwhelming to the foreground, which kind of does happen in the HDR process. So what I want to do is kind of just play with the colors that are in here and see what's going to happen when I adjust this slider. So when I adjust the red adjustment slider, you can see everything that was red, if I put it towards the dark end, gets really dark. Well, that starts to distract from my typewriter. So I'm going to pull that down. Oranges. There apparently is a lot of orange in this photograph. So I can drop the orange all the way down to pull that black typewriter out. Same with the yellows. Now the typewriter is starting to come out, but there's still more color in that typewriter that we can, that we can uh, take advantage of here. Pay attention to these adjustments here because you're going to see green, you're going to see orange, you're going to see aqua, all these different colors that you're not going to see in the Photoshop filter. Okay, so the other great thing about Camera Raw, I've got what, what I, I like this right now. I like this typewriter that I'm seeing here. It's, it's you know, pulling away from the background, um, but what I can take this a little bit further. I can actually go back into the basic adjustment panel and I can adjust the contrast and really kind of pull the contrast of that uh, typewriter out. Um, I can push those highlights back even farther and really blow them out. I don't really want to do that though because I don't think it looks very appealing. Um, but you see, you, you get a, a lot of control over your black and white images here in, in Camera Raw. So now you can save this as a preset. And if you want to save just what you did in the black and white panel, the hue, saturation, grayscale panel, you can do that. So when you go to the Create New Preset button, let's call this B and W, you can make it so that all of the settings uh, are selected or just certain settings are selected. Now, say you already did all your adjustments in the basic panel and you want to turn to black and white and you saved your preset like this, everything highlighted. What it's going to do is it's going to save that preset with everything that we just did here in Camera Raw. So if you want it to just be the black and white stuff, you just want to leave this grayscale conversion uh, right here by itself. You unclick all of these guys right here. Pardon my clicking. So all we're going to tell Camera Raw in the future is that all you want is the grayscale conversion. 
So press OK, and it will save just that, your, your grayscale conversion. And to test that, we can go up here and go to Reset to Camera Raw Default, Defaults, and then press the B&W preset that we have, and now we have a black and white image. Press OK to open it in Photoshop, and there we go. Now, what about this Photoshop filter for black and white? Let's go ahead and check it out. In the Adjustment Layer section, you can click Black and White. In Black and White, I told you before, pay attention to the orange and the cyan, or in the aquas that were in there, different, different color adjustment, uh, adjustments in Camera Raw that you don't quite see here in Photoshop which yields a little bit less control. I mean, we can we can reduce the reds, sure, we can reduce the yellows, um, but you see how powerful that yellow reduction is in Photoshop, where it wasn't quite so powerful in Camera Raw, it was more controlled in Camera Raw. Um, we kind of lose that here in Photoshop. Now we can still, we can still get that uh, typewriter pulled forward in Photoshop. But notice these highlight blowouts that we're getting here. That we aren't getting here. So, using Camera Raw as a black and white interface is an incredible addition to Photoshop CS6. Oftentimes I forget to start my black and white there in Camera Raw, but now realizing how powerful it is, that's probably the first place I'm going to go to do any black and white image editing. Again, this is EverydayHDR.com. My name is Blake Rudis. And if you like what you saw here, please subscribe to the YouTube channel or visit EverydayHDR.com every Friday where I do a tutorial. Sometimes I do a written one, which won't show up here on YouTube, and sometimes I do a video one. More than likely, I do video ones, though, so you're good to subscribe on YouTube. All right. Have a great weekend, play with Camera Raw in, uh, in black and white, and have some fun.